This is Congresswoman Virginia Fox with a congressional update. Usually in these programs, I try to bring you up to date on what has been going on in the Congress in the last week or two in terms of the votes and the controversies and uh, the issues that are facing the United States that we're dealing with specifically in the House of Representatives. Uh, but today, I thought that it would be useful if we talk uh, a little bit about the history of the United States House of Representatives and bring up some issues that are general in nature about the House that will be informative, I think, to you. Um, I like doing that on occasion because I think it's important that we place what is happening in the House in some historical context when we possibly can because history often will inform us as to why we are doing what we're doing in the current time. And we are very, very blessed today to have with us Dr. Robert Remini, who is the historian of the House of Representatives and has a distinguished career as a historian. I will only mention a couple of things about that. He is Professor of History Emeritus and Research Professor of Humanities Emeritus at the University of Illinois at Chicago, um, one of our premier institutions in the United States, I'll have to say. He's been historian of the House since 2005. And I think it's safe to say from one academician to another, um, having spent many of my, many years of my life on a university campus and a college campus that uh, it's, it's like throwing Brer Rabbit in the briar patch, I think, <laughs> to uh, take somebody who has such a distinguished career in history and loves the study of history as much as you do to come into the House of Representatives Indeed. and have the opportunity to write um, a seminal work um, on the House. Why don't you say something about this wonderful book that you've written um, for us all? Well, this uh, was uh, a history of the House from its beginning uh, that uh, Congressman Lawson first suggested and Congress passed requiring the writing of this uh, uh, book and turning it over to the Library of Congress. And uh, Dr. Billington, the librarian, asked me if I would like to do it. Now, most of my uh, academic uh, career had been spent doing biographies as you mentioned, Hen uh, Andrew Jackson, Henry Clay, etc. And I had never done an institutional book, but it meant becoming part of the whole uh, government and working within it and learning more about how it functions. And that was a challenge that I couldn't uh, resist. So I spent uh, uh, five years, uh, well, actually it started in 2003, but they asked me to have the book ready by 2005 because that was the year that the Congressional Visitors Center was to open. Right. It still isn't open, right. but it's this book appeared. And my biggest problem was finding a title uh, until Newt Gingrich, uh, Speaker Gingrich, told me a story about how two reporters from Pravda in Russia came to Washington and he showed them around and he brought them into the chamber of the house and one of them asked if it would be all right for him to go up to the speaker's chair and look around and Gingrich said sure go right ahead he went up sat down in the speaker's chair looked around came down and turned to Mr. Gingrich and said I have sat at the center of freedom. And I said, that's my title, the center of freedom. That's Guess brilliant. what happened? The publisher said, that won't sell any books. <laughs> it doesn't tell you what the book is about. I said, the subtitle will, the history of the House of Representatives. They said, no, it has to be called the, the House. Right. I'm sorry I didn't say it should be called the People's House because that is what it is. Right. And, I and, and that. you know, when I came for, and by the way, that gives me goosebumps to hear that kind of story, but um, 
I remember when I came for orientation when I was first elected, yes. and Speaker Hastert spoke to us um, in Statuary Hall. Oh. Uh, that first weekend that we were here, yes. he educated me a little bit about something that I had not realized, and that is the House and those of us who are in the House are in a unique position in that the, it is the only elected position in our government to which one cannot be appointed. One has to be elected to be there. And I the, the people. Speaker tied that together yes. with saying it is truly the people's house. Right. And I know Speaker Hastert has great affection for the House of Representatives and tried always to communicate that affection and the significance of the House of Representatives to our government uh, through his teachings. Yes. And as you say, uh, one, I think, is never a former teacher. One may be in some other occupation right. full time, but those of us who have taught and love teaching generally find a way to continue to do that. And I think Speaker Hastert used his position as speaker in a very wonderful way to continue that and bringing you in. And I want to say also that we hear a lot of criticism about our not being uh, bipartisan enough, but certainly the collaboration between Congressman John Larson, who's a Democrat, and Speaker Hastert, who yes. is a Republican, shows that we can be very bipartisan on issues that are important to the country. Uh, and, and in writing this book, I found that to be true. Uh, Speaker Hastert was very, very helpful. Uh, I interviewed him, but I also interviewed a number of uh, former uh, Democratic and Republican speakers, members of Congress, both on both sides, and all were very frank in, in what they had to say and very cooperative, and I'm very grateful. The book wouldn't be as good as I hope it is, uh, without their uh, help. Well, I find that um, it is such an honor for me to serve here. And when I first came, somebody else said to me uh, that she told her staff, if when you leave at night and you see the lights on the Capitol, you don't get goosebumps, then you need to go home. Yes. Uh, and, and I think that is absolutely the way it should be. We yes. all should remember what a great honor it is it to is. serve here and what a unique institution it is. And I think that we have the Capitol in the background there, and of course it encompasses both the House and the Senate, but it, it does, I believe, bring to people's mind uh, what this government's about. Right. That more than anything else signifies the government of the United States and, and as, the United States. And as a matter of fact, on December the 16th of this year, it, the House chamber, as it exists today, opened for the first time 150 years ago. Oh, great. It has been the site of all that has happened in the last 150 years because both those wings had to be added in the 1850s because the country had grown so large and the chamber was still so mo the the chamber in the uh, that is now the statuary hall it wasn't big enough right and so they built that wing on the south end and 150 years ago it was mm -hmm next week. Well, I get a great thrill out of taking people into the gallery when we are debating and when we are voting <clears throat> because I think people get such a great perspective from being in the gallery and everybody I have been able to take up there gets very excited about it and they say, well, you know, it's so different than watching it on C-SPAN. Right. But we are fortunate also to have C-SPAN and for people to be able to watch what is happening on the floor and gain some sense of how things are going. 